Hello everyone, this is Cyclewolf11 here, and we're going to be starting the second episode in Dual Destinies. Having a Yakai testify in court is unprecedented, to say the least. I am Tenmataro, the Yokai you seek. How could such straight-laced man like Mr. Tenma suddenly become a demon? Yeah, it's strange. Even worse, Prosecutor Blackwell's playing along. Ugh, I can't even think straight anymore. I need to go out for some for a run. I was gonna, I was gonna say for for some sun. <laughs> She's like, I'm feeling a bit pale. See you in a bit. <laughs> Wait, what about the investigation? Back. Eek. Whoa, whoa, Trucy, welcome back. Oh, you're in your stage outfit. Back from work. Yep. I'm really nailed this new magic trick I've been working on. I also heard about those tricks that were conjured up in court earlier today. You know, the Demon Out of Nowhere trick and Polly's Tightrope the Style Defense trick. I struggled through that sentence, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I was seriously considering a disappearing act of my own after all the craziness. Anyway, our next trick... Blech. Our next trick is to find a suspect other than the mayor. I know the killer must have used that air duct in their escape. And whoever did that was the Tematara that Mr. Filch and Jinxie saw. Right, maybe there's some evidence in the air duct. The real fight starts now. Hey, before you go, let me make the evidence you no know, longer need to disappear. Three, two, one. Ta -da! How do you know what I needed and what I didn't need? She just was like, I'm just gonna throw shit that I'm, I think you don't need. I don't know if you actually need it or not. I wonder where all that stuff goes. Okay, let's... Oh shit, that's not her voice. Okay, let's get over to sign... Uh, scene of the crime. Vamanos, Apollo, vamanos! This girl just want, just jumps into different languages, like a... Back and forth. Right. Detective Fulbright, mind if we search the air... Uh, the air does. Reading is what I'm good at, you know. Well... Shit, that's not... What was his voice again? Well, since you really are on the side of justice, I suppose I can let you... Plus, my own sense of justice has been called into doubt, so... wonder if he's been like this ever since the trial. Well, his sense of justice has been beaten to a pulp. It'll probably take a while for him to recover. I sort of feel bad for him, but we have to work to... Uh, we have work to do. Let's go get the evidence we need! The air duct is the key. We know that Tematara in person will use it to make an escape. After murdering the alderman, the killer left the fox chamber through the hallway door. Then, after locking the room from the outside, the killer entered the air duct in the hallway. Finally, the killer dropped the key into the fox chamber through the vent here. Then went back through the, de through the duct and fled to the manor. That's how the illusion of no one entering or leaving the locked room was created. If the killer bounced through the air duct, maybe we'll find some evidence there. Yeah, maybe some black feathers or something like that. Well, here's our vent. It's awfully high up. Don't worry, I brought a stepladder. Happy hunting! How nice of her to volunteer me for the job. Oh, it's pitch black in here. Well, here goes nothing. <laughs> There's a thick layer of dust in here. <laughs> I don't get it. Find anything? Yikes, Apollo, what happened? You're covered in dust. Yes, yeah, dust. Lots of dust. So what did you find? You know how dust collects on something when nobody uses it for a long time? Yeah, like Mr. White's desk back at the office. Right. You think it'd be possible to crawl over that sort of dust without leaving a trail? I seriously doubt it. Wait, you're not suggesting... No one gone through that duck lately. Kinda looks that way. And if it's true, Mayor Temer is going to be fingered as a killer. But, but, if we don't turn things around... Ha ha ha! 
Sorry, Mr. Justice, but it seems your justice was not the most just after all. It is my sense of justice that has prevailed. Ugh. Detective Fulbright sure seems to trip all of a sudden. Ugh. And I'm back to my old de devastated self. Oh, come on! Where's that never say die spirit? Bring it on, Mr. Lawyer Man, bring it on! Let me suffer in peace. Ha ha ha! Justice prevails once more! It's not over yet, and besides, kicking someone when they're down is just what bad guys do. Ah! Are you calling me a bad guy? Me, Bobby Fulbright, champion of justice? Then how about some investi- Oh, how about some information on the investigation? We need some help here. Information? About the investigation? Alright, but I won't have you calling me a bad guy ever again. Understood. We did it, Apollo. Yeah, but how long can we keep this up? We can't believe Prosecutor Blackwell would stoop that low. I mean, to pin in the blame on a yokai, he really wants a conviction at all costs. She could give a yokai a run for its money when she's mad. Yes, well, I have him writing a self-reflective essay as we speak. I doubt that'll teach him anything. Yeah, he'll probably just write Dota a thousand times. That, well, that whole yokai business is most likely a ploy to win a conviction. Truth is, Prosecutor Blackwell believes Jinxie Tema planted that yokai stuff. Planted it in an effort to protect her father, the real killer. Yeah, right. I'd like to see him prove it. Whoa, calm down. He doesn't have any direct evidence, but we did find this. It was at the base of the cliff, just outside Kyubi Manor. Wait, that isn't the staff Tematara was supposedly carrying, carrying, is it? The one and only... Mr. Tem oh, Miss Temma. Miss Temma no doubt tossed it over the cliff when she was done. No way! Well, what about Prince? Nope, no Prince. But if she was wearing a costume, there wouldn't be any anyway. Well, Prince or no Prince, it's not gonna work in our favor. Sounds like that staff might have belonged to the mansion. But if that's the case... Then where in the mansion did Temataro get it from? Did Prosecutor Blackwell figure out that the victim was the Amazing Ninetales? He did indeed. He's a sharp one, right? What do you mean? Oh, you're saying did he figure it out and no one told him? Okay. I was like, Apollo, what are you talking about? He literally mentioned that in the last episode. Anyway. He figured it out while investigating the municipal murder with the victim's past. The Amazing Ninetales sparked the yokai craze and worked against the murder. And Mayor Damien Temo is the corrupt politician who murdered that great hero. The amazing Ninetales fans are so angry, they even tried to storm the detention center. Oh shit. I don't blame them. I mean, their favorite mass wrestling hero was murdered. He must have been shocked when he found out what happened. Speaking of which, isn't Jinxie also a fan of the amazing Ninetales? The rest of his mask is more precious than his own life. Never mask himself in front of others, but there are matches where wrestlers battle for the right to remove each other's masks. To have your own mask torn off is the worst humiliation a wrestler could suffer. That's why their masks are more important to them than life itself. She spoke with passion that only a man, uh, a man, <laughs> only a man could have reached her. I'm so sorry. That could that's the worst word I could have fumbled on. She spoke of a passion that only a fan could appreciate. Women could appreciate it too. Well days and dens, whatever. <laughs> we wanna become fans ourselves and go protest in, in front of the prison. What no! Did you forget that Mary Timmer is not only Jinxie's father but our client? Oh yeah. You be careful now, you're defending the most hated mayor in history. I just hope you don't find yourself on the wrong end of a figure four leg lock. Maybe I should wear a mask to hide my identity. Are there any other new developments we should know? Hmm. Now that you mention it, our suspect is suffering partial memory loss, but he did manage to remember something. He did? What did he say? 
He said he didn't want to speak with us. His exact words were, I am no... Oh, shit. I am under no obligation to speak with you mortals. And other things of that nature. I wonder what Mayor Tenman remembered. Too bad you can't ask, ask him now because Prosecutor Blackwell's busy questioning him. I know, why don't you wait down on the playground with the rest of the kids? Ha <laughs> ha! What now, Apollo? How about regrouping back at the agency? Good idea, we might get some words of wisdom out of Mr. Wright while we're there. We didn't even look around. Uh, okay then. We just went there, talked to the detective, and then left. Like, that's... I couldn't be doing all this detective work on my poor legs. I can't do it. Maybe I'll go read over some past cases. No, I'll go do some research on exorcisms. Hey, what's with you guys? You seem bummed out. How should I put this? It's like we're at the edge of a cliff and the only way is down. In other words, business as usual, right? Yeah, I suppose so. Except this time it's like we're bound and gagged too. Don't forget blindfolded with our ears plugged up. Whoa, the monster is at every turn, huh? Sounds rough. Hey, Apollo. Oh, and Athena's here too. Mr. Wright. Now goes the investigation, Apollo, Athena. I think it's safe to say that things have gone hairier than before. Really? What happened? I was watching the two of you this morning from the gallery. That was one tough day in court, to say the least. I know. I've never had to defend a yokai before. The business about the locked room was another major hurdle. Yeah, and on top of that, Jinxie was accused of being an accomplice! But at least you figured out how someone could have escaped that locked room. Yeah, well, we just found out that our- How are we going to get out of this one? The worst of times are when lawyers have to force their biggest smiles. Force? A smile? Yeah, my mentor taught me that back when I was still learning the trade. She also taught me to return to the basics whenever I got stuck. Return to the basics? That's right. Always believe in your client, no matter what happens. That is a lawyer's greatest and most trusted weapon. The basics. Always believe in your client, huh? So, Mr. Wright, how long have you known Athena? I met her during my trip to Europe. Huh? You were in Europe? Why haven't I heard about this before? Yeah, I went there a few times to study the various legal systems over there. Oh, okay. Uh, wait a minute. I thought you worked as a pianist after you quit practicing law. I, I did, but an old friend of mine needed help with some legal work from time to time, so... Oh, I guess you were never really far from the courtroom then. It was like fate brought us together. It's thanks to Mr. Wright that I became a lawyer at all. <laughs> I knew she was lawyer material from the moment I met her, and I have high hopes for her ability to analyse people and emotions. Oh, it's nothing special. Hmm, maybe I've underestimated that analytical psychology of hers. It's just, I thought if that my special ability could help defend innocent people. 18, no less. Wow, that's almost superhuman. Hu superhuman. Or personal, like she's trying. And don't forget to return to the basics whenever you get stuck. Keep believing in my client. Right. Um, Mr. Wright? Yes? I'm... I'm... That's a good idea. All right, time to go see what's new down at the detention center. Mayor Temo, we wanted to talk to you about something. <laughs> So, my minions have returned. Apollo, he still thinks he's a yokai. I wonder if we'll ever be able to talk to Meritemma again. Silence, peddler of the legal trade. Free me from these imprisoned walls with great haste. Wow, he sounded more and more like a real demon with every sentence. I'm starting to wonder if we should be even helping him with it when his freedom. Still, we can't let Mayor Temma stay possessed, you know what I mean? If you can clear me of these charges, I shall help him whatever manner I may. Now ask of me what you will. I suppose it's worth a shot. 
It's too scary. I don't like it. <laughs> are those feathers and tracks at the scene of the crime really you're doing? Indeed. The remnants of Tematara, king of the underworld, they be. The day when I once again dominate the mortal world is at hand. Ka 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 ka. The prosecution claims the feathers and tracks were planted by Jinxie. What's this? I must breach these walls and go defend my little Jinxie at once. Huh? The timber is at you. Uh, uh, well, now Damien appears to still reside within this body. But I should have expected as much from a descent of mine. Be silent now, Damien. Mm, I guess a little thing like demonic possession won't stop a father's love for his daughter. <laughs> you didn't kill Alderman Kayubi, did you? I killed no one. Remnants of my presence have been misconstrued. The murderer is bleh, the murderer is not I. For if I had slain a mortal, raging hellfire would have consumed him. Uh, I didn't read what that said. Damn it! Leaving naught but ash. I have something new to tell me. Indeed, I have. I regurgitated this key, but a short while ago. Behold, the key to the forbidden chamber. Whoa! Is regurgitation one of your demonic powers too? Bah! I do not waste my powers on such parlor tricks. Take the key from the killer, did Damien, whereupon he swallowed it. He sought to bar the killer entry to the forbidden chamber. So he wanted to keep it shut tight. But no fingerprint shall you find upon that key. How'd you know that? Wait, is that another one of your demonic powers then? Foolish mortal! You would have to ask how you use this key. We couldn't find the keyhole anywhere in our or around the door. In or around the door. Curse that infernal door. But if I had known its manner of opening long, long ago, would I have made my mater ugh, return? He has a point now. Maybe Jinxie knows something about how the whole thing works. It's fine, Jinxie. She's here. Just wandering the streets. No? Okay. Is she in the garden? Oh, that's not the garden! No, I don't want to zoom again. Look at him. The hand thing he does in the mouth. Oh. So scary. He said to go to Jinxie. Uh, um, I was hoping you'd take a look at this. An offering to me. Quite admirable. But the best thing you could offer me is to win me my freedom. Ha 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 uh, right. Uh, I'll do my best. What am I supposed to do? Maybe I should show the detective the key. Be like, yo, open up the door. <laughs> Look, key. Justice needs backup sometimes too. So don't mind you asking for help, but you should start by thinking things over yourself. After all, the road to justice starts with your own first step. Ha ha ha. If you don't have any information to offer, you could just say something. Hmm. Um, it's not letting me do anything. I've been everywhere. Go back to the agency. Anything from Mr. Wright? No. Okay. Have I forgot to ask something? I must have forgotten to ask something. No? Okay. Damn it, I'm stuck. Superstitions. No? Okay. Scroll? Ages has it been since I've seen that. We often battled it out like this back in the day. <laughs> I've been meaning to ask, but which one of you was stronger? Ha 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 ha. That would be me, of course. For I am the demon lord of the yokai. Ka sha. <laughs> yeah, but the nine tailed spots really. It really did what? Imprisoned you in. Athena, don't encourage him. It's already hard enough as it is. Oh, I just wanted to find out which one was really the strongest. Is that all? Okay, that wasn't... I mean, it unlocked some dialogue, but that was about it. Nothing interesting. What about the flying? Why, that's a photo of me soaring through the heavens. Mm, but look at my wing angle, it's all wrong. Wow, you really are a stickler for details. I even gave a big smile for the camera. But so small am I in this shot that one can't even see it. Never knew demons were so interested in how they presented by the media. 
again, another... Oh! The statue. What might I ask is that? This statue was found at the uh, scene. Someone has hit mere Temuru over the head with it. It had been wrapped in a large cloth before the older man's murder. Let me see whether Damien knows about such a thing. Hmm, yes. Something wrapped in just such a cloth, does he recall? A secret gift from Alderman Kayubi, it would seem. He, however, had not a chance to see it until now, for the cloth did conceal it. Maybe the cloth fell off or was removed after the mirror struck. Hmm. Of that, Damien does not know. Secret gift? Interesting. Maybe Jinxie knows something about it. I should question him about the Black Mother letter too. I did! But he didn't want to talk to me! I already showed it him! <laughs> Oops, I didn't. Whoops. I did show it him though. Why this? This is that a cursed blackmail letter that was sent to Damien. Apparently somebody slipped it into the old man's pocket. We believe someone, probably the killer, stole it from May Temer's briefcase. You wouldn't happen to know anything about that, would you? <laughs> you have questions, do you? Very well. Ask away, mortal. Who placed this in the Alderman's pocket? <clears throat> Very few were they. Who knew the letter was in Damien's briefcase? So, whoever knew about the blackmail letter being in the mayor's briefcase is a potential suspect in its theft and placement in the Alderman's pocket. Ah, could it have been? His doing? Mr. Mayor, uh, I mean, Mr. Taro, did you just remember something? Indeed I did. There was but one other who knew of that letter. Damien's aide, Florence LaBelle. Full knowledge of that briefcase contents did that aid possess. Then he may be the blackmailer and the murderer we're looking for. That is preposterous. He's our most trusted advisor. He would never betray Damien. It seems like Mayor Temer is a bit too trusting of those around him. Still, this is huge. Now we know who might have slipped that blackmail letter in the older man's pocket. Look out, Florent LaBelle, here comes justice. Let's go find Mr. LaBelle and rake him over the coals. Okay. Thanks for the help, you've just given us a major lead. Hmm, there's something that still bothers me. If Mr. LaBelle is the killer, what could have motivated him to open the Forbidden Chamber? We should probably search it for clues. Only one- oh shit. Only one problem. How do you open a locked door and it doesn't have a keyhole? Let's go talk to Jinxie, maybe she can help. Let's go talk to Jinxie. Where the hell is Jinxie? <laughs> oh, she was where I was looking the whole time. Imagine that. <laughs> hey, isn't that... Oh. Oh, I didn't say any for long. Sorry, I was having a... I was having a bit of a... I was having a little soup. Let's go back. Where was it? Grr. You dare imprison me. Jinxie! She's acting really strange. No, sir, no, good nine tails fox. You shall know the terror that is mine and despair. <laughs> you shall pay. Oh, you shall pay dearly. All of you! J Jinxie, are you alright? Eek! Ah! Oh, is that you, Mr. Demon Lawyer? Morning, Jinxie. Morning? Isn't it already past noon? And what am I doing here? The last I remember, I lay down to take a nap back at the manor. Oh no, it must have been the Makura... Oh god. Makura... Makura Gaishi. Makura Gaishi? No. Ever wake up after a restless night's sleep to find your pillow in an unusual place? Or that you've been sleeping on the floor in the hallway? What is that yokai's fault The Mekukuraishi preys on people when they're asleep? Sounds like you just need to be tucked in really tight or maybe a snug sleeping bag. Hinksy, how come you don't have any charms on your forehead? I don't. Oh, they must have fallen off. Without them, evil things can creep into me. Oh god. I say we'd had more of an adequate demonstration of that just now. I'd better reapply them. 
Jinxie, there's something we wanted to ask you. Ah, there was something I wanted to tell you too. I, I remember something else. You did? What was it? Jinxie, can you tell us what you remembered? Well, after the trial I remembered lots of stuff. But there was one thing we thought was really weird. My mom was afraid to ask, but here goes. Really? What? Um, it's about the yokai feathers and the tracks. They weren't there when I first opened the door. Wait, what? Are you sure? Uh-huh. My memory's crystal clear now. So you're saying they were left at the crime scene after you found it? This could spell major trouble, Apollo. Why? Because Jinxie's already accused of leaving the feathers and tracks at the scene. If they weren't there when she discovered the crime scene, it will totally fuel the claim that she fabricated the evidence later on. <laughs> Jinxie's fuzzy memory of the whole incident is really working against us. The prosecution will probably say he, he, she doesn't remember anything haunting the evidence. Good luck rebutting that. Oh man, this is not good. I sure hope she didn't plant the evidence while she was sleepwalking or something. Jinxie, you wouldn't happen to know how to open the forbidden chamber, would you? That door doesn't even have a keyhole. Well, it's supposed to have a secret mechanism. They say you have to figure it out before the keyhole will appear. A secret mechanism, really? Uh-huh. It's hidden in the fox chamber. But only Alderman Kyobi knew what it was and how it worked. The Alderman of Ninetales Vale sure loved his secrets. Apollo, let's go see if we can find that secret mechanism. Whoa, slow down! There's something else I need to ask about. Jinxie, is there only one key to the Forbidden Chamber? Uh-huh. Even the Manor's Master Key won't open it. That's because it's a very special room. That must never be open. Guess that means nobody entered the Forbidden Chamber after the murder. After all, we no men attempt took the key from the killer and swallowed it, so... So the Mayor's efforts to keep the killer out of the Forbidden Chamber... We're not in vain. Was there something else I had to ask? Ask about the key. Can I show her the letter? What's this? A suku... A suku... Suku... Sukumagami? Sukumagami? A yokai that inhabits objects that have been really used for a really long time. The red demon and a sukumagami. What a strange combination. Is everything to her some supernatural phenomenon? 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 <laughs> I'm not good at reading. Let's go to the fox chamber. I thought there was something else we had to ask her, but maybe not. I think there is. Go back. I, what was it? I can't remember. I right, asked about the key. What else was it? Oh, the statue. I, I constantly forget that statue exists, even though it's the murder weapon. No, it's not the murder weapon. <laughs> we don't even have the murder weapon. It, this is just an assault weapon, I guess. Alderman Kayubi made that statue. It's a token of goodwill. I think it's meant to be for Ninetales Vale in Tematon. Token of goodwill, but the two yokai are fighting. Fighting? Oh, I see what you mean. The cup portion's missing. This statue... ...originally depicted the two yokai holding up a cup in celebration. But it sure doesn't look that way now, does it? Maybe it broke when it was used to hit their temper on the head. That would explain it. I guess the only two people who knew what it in the radio looks like were the old men and I. Now it's just me, but a symbol of goodwill will be forever etched in my mind. It's really quiet, I can't even hear the game. How's my audio? Okay, my audio is fine, thank god. <clears throat> so, is there anything else we should know about Jinxie? No, uh, that's about it. Oh, she lying! 
Ah, my bracelet, it's reacting. Jinxie, you wouldn't happen to be... Injustice, we trust. Yikes. Eek, a ghost. Oh, Detective Fulbright, what are you doing here? I have business with this young lady, if you must know. This prosecutor Blackwell has asked me to question her. Question me? Sorry, not interested. You here ask about that whole yokai affair? That's right. Specifically, we want to ask. Ah, but I can't tell you that now, can I? Ha 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 ha. Oh, come on, please. We're partners in justice, right? No, no. Prosecutor Blackwell specifically told me in my questions were of the utmost justice. I will not fall for your lies. In justice, we trust. The Twisted Samurai sure has him on a short leash. So you're not a ghost? Maybe some sort of urban troll then? Now, come along, Miss Tenma. I'm trying to stay shop with you. He took her away. I missed my chance to see what she was lying about. Yeah, every time his bracelet reacts, he doesn't actually get to use it. Oh, he used it once on Tenma. Never mind. But, not enough. Well, at least... Oh god. Well, at least we found out there's a secret mechanism for opening the chamber. Let's go check it out. I just hope they let us in now. Oh. Oh, what an absolutely fabulous scent. I'm so glad I had these carnations imported from England. Nothing but the finest will do. Perhaps I should place one aside for our dearly departed alderman. Hey, it's Mr. LaBelle. Apollo, let's ask him about you know what. Oh yeah, before we search the fox chamber, we should ask that blackmail letter. Why, if it isn't the mayor's little lawyers, what do you want with me? Oh, um, there's something we wanted to ask. Where's that ring coming from? You'll have to excuse me. Hello, Nibel here. What the? Those things on his shoulders are cell phones? Uh, yes, about that, you must forgive me. This whole matter with Mayor Timmer has been a complete nightmare. Where, where do you buy clothes like that? <laughs> Surprised? This is my own special design. It's the ultimate in functional beauty. Functional beauty? Are you sure about that? Looks a bit unwieldy to me. <laughs> you simply don't have an eye for beauty. If having an eye for beauty means looking like this guy, I'd rather be blind. So what do you... Oh god. So what do you want with me? Both Jinxie and Mr. Filch said they saw Temra's horror. But what about you, Miss Annabelle? If you were in the foyer, why didn't you see... Ah! Ah! <laughs> Very well, I admit it. That's right, I, Florence Bell, saw the Demon Temnotaro. Hmm, so he did see something. Then why did you lie about not seeing him? I was simply trying to protect dear little Jinxie. Protect Jinxie? What do you mean? Why, don't tell me you haven't heard of that strange little habit of hers. Which one are you talking about? The one where her, she wanders around making mischief without knowing what she's doing. Rumor has it she's possessed by Tempataro. That one's new to me. <laughs> Who will dare you have it? Anytime you hear about a Tempataro's sighting, little Jinxie should be your prime suspect. Tell us more about that rumor. So, what was that rumor about Jinxie? They say she's possessed. Not all the time, of course. It hits suddenly, then she starts wandering around doing strange things. It, is that so? Although, come to think of it. That certainly would explain how she was acting earlier. Once, she even put a Tamataro costume and wandered around the woods at night. She did. What? 
<laughs> Ugh, I wish I'd never asked. Does she remember anything while she's possessed? Unfortunately, no. She doesn't seem to remember a thing during these episodes. Memory loss during possession. Hmm. Come to think of it, her memory of the murder scene was quite fuzzy. I suppose that, too, was caused by her possession. Ah, then maybe. <laughs> so you do understand. That whole yokai business was entirely of her own making. Now, wait a minute. Although that yokai evidence wasn't there until after she discovered the crime scene, did she leave those black feathers and strange tracks there herself? Apollo, let's ask Matemma about Jinxie's episodes the next time we talk with him. What is that? It's the blackmail letter, but it wasn't sent to Alderman Kayubi. It was sent to Mayor Temna. And? Your point being? Someone took the letter from the mayor's briefcase and then placed it in the Alderman's pocket after he was murdered. Oh, you don't say! You wouldn't happen to be the one who made the switch, would you? After all, you're the only one who knew that blackmail letter was in his briefcase. So naturally, you. Ah! Oh! <laughs> Perhaps that shot of cologne will make those scales fall from your eyes! Or my eyes fall from their sockets. It is possible that she would like to frame me to, as a potential suspect? What would make you raise such an outrageous allegation in the first place? Oh, uh, well. <laughs> My only crime is being born as beautiful as you see here. In other words, you have nothing. Now, let me show you what to do with this garbage. Ah, you can't destroy evidence like that. What do you mean I can't? I just did. <laughs> Feel a little lighter now. You just want a one-way trip to the top of my most annoying people ever list, buddy. Are we done with your silly questions now? I'm a very busy man, you know. Ugh, I guess that's it for now. Hello, Lavelle speaking. Really? You wish to carry my new product at your store? Oh, but I'm afraid it's my own private brand. It's not available to the public. What? Then I shouldn't advertise it on TV? But I don't understand! As the embodiment of beauty, it is my duty to announce my good looks to the world! Start the bus. I'm getting off. <laughs> Everyone wants my exclusive Je Suis Lavelle brand products! It's the crown jewel of my collection for one of my long, relentless pursuit of beauty! But now that it's become so popular, it's been an absolute nightmare! You don't say. Well, they can't have it! It's just for me! It's not meant for you peasants! Peasants? This is my latest product. I'm calling it Color Me the Bell. A dazzling hair color that you can wash out with just water. Guess that means you can't sweat. I have seven colours in all! You can find out more in my commercials and magazine ads. Yet it's not available to the public. Great sales strategy there, genius. Once to think of it, Mr. LaBelle. Your hair colour has changed since the last time we met. <laughs> that little lady has quite a discerning eye. Here, a little sample. Consider it a gift for one who truly appreciates beauty. Oh, uh... Hello, what should I do? Better take it before you get a face full of cologne. Good point. Uh, wow, thanks, Miss Annabelle. Okay, let's head over to the Fox Chamber. We've still got to find that secret mechanism for opening the Forbidden Chamber. Okay, bye. <laughs> he was fun to voice out. Okay, let's find out secret mechanism for opening the Forbidden Chamber. Oh, this is so exciting! I can't wait to see how it works. Do you really think we can enter the Forbidden Chamber? 
we'll just have to out open it and find out. We should also see if there's was anywhere the killer could have hidden this room. Okay, let's get started. Apparate, apparate, apparate. I think I don't know how to say that. <laughs> I don't know what was that Italian. I don't know what that was. It didn't. It wasn't Spanish, from my knowledge. Uh, let's just look at this, I guess. Still no keyhole, huh? Yeah, and the door won't budge, just like that spiky bang of yours. Those spiky bangs. Well, all it takes is some water, but I don't think that would work on the door. Oh, I know. I'll break it down with a body slam. <laughs> I, I seriously doubt you could do that. How do you know if I haven't even tried? No, wait, don't! Nah. As much as you hate losing, Athena, I think the doll would win this match. Hmm. There really is no escaping through the air duct. If here we went through all that trouble, we'll bring the ladder to check it out. That's not a ladder, Apollo, it's a step ladder. What's the difference? They both have the same... They both have the word ladder in them. What's the difference? Oh, I know. Let's play rock, paper, scissors to decide who's right. You're way too competitive. And it's not even related to the original issue either. Hmm. Mm. I don't know where to look. Two foxes standing back to back. Like depicted on this elegant folding screen. Is this has something to do with the keyhole? Hmm. Wait a minute. Two foxes. There are two fox statues in front of the forbidden chamber as well. Maybe the keyhole will appear if we do something to this folding screen. Hmm. Oh. Hmm. But I don't see anything unusual about it. Well, it does have two foxes on it, and there are two fox statues in front of the door. Then maybe there's a clue somewhere in this room. Just turn the whole place upside down. She's ex as excited as a kid in the candy store. Um, clues, clues, clues. Look at the foxes, I guess. There's a carving of the nine-tailed fox over the door, and statues of him on either side. The way those two statues are glaring, it's like they're guarding the door from us. Come to think of it, there are two foxes on the folding screen as well. It can't be a coincidence, can it? Can't be a coincidence. Hey, this statue moves! Don't get carried away now. I mean, who knows? It might trigger a trap. <laughs> I can handle it. If a spear comes shooting my way, I'll snatch it out of the air. After all, I have the reflexes of a regular karate kid. I guess if you can catch something that fast out of midair, you can accomplish anything. Still, there might be something to the fact that these spot statues rotate. Maybe there's something around here that shows the position they should be in. Let me rotate them then. What do you mean? It's this back to back. But it doesn't want me to. It doesn't want me to rotate them. Okay. This statue originally. Oh, this statue. This statue originally depicted the two yokai holding up a cup in a gesture of goodwill. Maybe Alderman Kyubi was planning on smoothing things over with Mayor Tanda. But he was murdered instead. By somebody who intervened. The mayor was only pursuing the municipal merger because he'd been blackmailed. Who knows, if this murder hadn't occurred, maybe they could have come up with a solution. Uh, what am I supposed to be looking at? The floor. Hmm. Maybe the killer hid under this table. That would be a terrible hiding place. The alderman's body would be right above. Hmm, you're right. Guess the underside is a bit... Wait, there's something under the table. Let's check it out. Wait, how have you never seen what was under there? Wow. Hey, look, there's something down here. It looks like a piece of something. The only question is, a piece of what? Hmm. Oh, I know. It might be a piece of the statue. Remember what Jinxie said? And a flashback? No? Okay. The statue originally depicted two yokai holding on a cup. It was a symbol of goodwill. 
So this piece broke off and rolled under the table. Well, I can't think of anywhere else to look. You find anything, Apollo? We'll never find a keyhole to the forbidden chamber at this rate. There's something about that folding screen. Who knows how those fo statues in front of this forbidden chamber move? Oh, you know. <laughs> that screen might be a clue as to how they're supposed to position them or something. Hey, I bet you're right. Let's go over that screen with a fine tooth comb. Can it make me... Let me rotate the statue. Or fold that. On closer inspection, I think there's more to the screen than meets the eye. Let's check every last inch of it. I can rotate the folding screen with the right stick. And if I spot anything of interest, I can press X on it to inspect it further. You can also zoom in and out with triangle and circle to get a better look. Now let's check every last inch of it. Hey, doesn't that look pitch? Hey, doesn't it look like the picture here has been cut off from both ends? Hmm, now that you mention it, it looks like there are supposed to be doors on both ends, but they're cut in half. Maybe those, maybe those doors symbolize the Forbidden Chamber's door. Yeah, it definitely feels like something significant, but the question is what? Hmm. What's this? It looks like a keyhole or something. You think this could be the keyhole of... You think this could be the keyhole to the Forbidden Chamber? No, it's just a picture. Still, you know what they say, a picture's worth a thousand words. Let me fold it in. It's a picture of a key. Hmm. The shape looks awfully familiar. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. It's shaped like the Forbidden Chamber's key. Hmm. Wait, what about that keyhole drawn on the centre of the screen? You think the two are related? A key and a keyhole? Ooh, I just got an idea! If we folded the screen up just right, the key and the keyhole could overlap. Hey, I think you're right. Let's give it a try. Look, a door. Yeah, and it's open too. The two foxes are facing, now facing each other, so... Hey, what if we made those fox statues face each other? Apollo! Let's go check out those two statues! Okay, help me move the two statues so they face each other, just like on the screen. Look! A lock appeared. Now we can use that key. Now I can use that key! Okay, here goes nothing. <laughs> Got a chunk. It worked! It's time to see why this chamber's so forbidden. What secrets could it hold, I wonder? Boom. I don't know why I did the sound effects when it already does it. These doors need some serious oil. Ah! That was like nails on a chalkboard! Oh, right. Forgot about those super good ears of yours. Look! More feathers. Oh my god. Eek! What the heck is that? Is that a Temetaro statue? But there's... There's something odd about it. Ugh. All I know is I don't like it, but I can't explain why. You okay, Athena? You look kind of pale. You're not scared, are you? What? Of this thing? Don't make me laugh. <laughs> really? Hey, look. Look! What is it? Over there on the left, there's a bunch of sta stars on that rack. Staves. Stars. Staves. Kind of look like the stuff we saw earlier. Stars, staves, staves. You mean the one Jinxie saw? Said she saw Temotaro carrying. Yeah, I bet our Temotaro impersonator really did come in here at some point. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's search this place. Oh, 
What's this? Whatever it is, the packaging is really gaudy. And the fact that there's no dust on it means it hasn't been here very long. Oh, it's hand cream! Let's see what brand it is. JC, with a bell? The bell? What the? But then, wouldn't that mean Mr. LaBelle's here? I guess so, but why? Well, whoever was dressed up like Tamataro must have taken the staff from here in the Forbidden Chamber. And that same person probably dropped this hand cream at that time. In other words, the Tamataro impersonator we're looking for is none other than... Florent LaBelle. I mean, they should have realised that ages ago. This might be a big break for us in court tomorrow. Now all we have to do is get the truth out of Mayor Temma. Not sure what it's now. Oh look, there's an air vent here too. I guess even forbidden chambers need proper ventilation. Hmm. I don't think anyone could reach this one either. Yeah, and there's nothing to stand on around here. I wonder where the vent leads. Well, the fox chamber vent didn't branch this way, so... Maybe it doesn't have anything to do with this case after all. Mm. Apollo, I think you're just wasting your time there. What? Oh, I didn't click the... Hey, there's a bunch of staves here, and it looks like one's missing. The Timotaro Jinxie saw must have taken it. I'd have to agree, these looks like the ones Detective Fulbright showed us. Why do you think there's so many here? Maybe they're spares. Tim Mataro might be, you know, absent-minded or something. But the fact is that he has spare staves handy, well... It shows that he's aware of his faults and he's trying to deal with them. Or at least it, that's my take on it. Maybe this will remind her to, to deal with her own faults. But I won't hold my breath. Uh, feathers? Black feathers. They look exactly like the ones in the fox chamber. That means the killer must have been in here at some point. The question is, why? Maybe... Maybe the Tematara costume was hidden in here. I mean... If someone carried it through the manor, it would have stuck out like a sore thumb. But when did the killer get in here? The mayor snatched the forbidden chamber key when the killer hit him on the head. That means the killer could have only gotten in here before the murder. Wow, this is one tough riddle, right? Looks like a gravestone or something. It reads, Here lies Tim Mataro, age 80. Cause of death, choked on a chicken bone. <laughs> Say it ain't so. Besides, that sounds more like an autopsy report than an epitaph, if you ask me. Wait, you're joking around because you're scared. It's your coping mechanism. I'm not scared. Freak out central, right here, baby. Cut it out, widget. The now is strong in this one. Looks like an old scroll, and there's something drawn on it. Unless I'm mistaken, it looks like an old guy. Some sort of monk, maybe. A monk? What are you talking about? You know, people that take walks in the mountains as a form of spiritual retraining. Wouldn't that just be a hiker? The guy in his picture doesn't look like he's doing this for fun, at the funeral. Hmm. Oh, look, there's something yellow. There's some yellow thing strapped onto his back. Whoa, it's turning into Temataro. What's this scroll getting at? Is this is this how Temataro was born? Well, whatever it is, it's definitely creepy. Whoa, that's one big statue. It must be something like 15 feet tall. And look, this Temataro has staff. But the Temataro in the scroll didn't have one. Hmm, I wonder why. I feel like this could be significant, but why? I mean, it was brought up in court <laughs> about who knows that he's got staff and doesn't. Anyway, let's take a closer look. First, go around this table here. Oh. Ah, Apollo, are you sure that's a good idea? Hey, it looks like there's some sort of compartment in the back base of the statue. Don't open it! Who knows what might be in there? What's in there? It's just a big empty compartment. And from all this dust and cobwebs, 
Let's say it hasn't been opened in a really long time. That's enough, Apollo. Let's shut it down. Wait, there is something in here. Looks like some sort of figure. But it's so dusty, I can't tell what it's supposed to be. I wonder what it's doing here. I'll just put it in my pocket. Guess that about wraps it up. What now? We should probably talk to some of the witnesses again. You mean like Mr. Filch and Jinxie? Yeah, I really want to ask Mr. Filch about the vial, the, vial, the village superstitions and Tematoro. Uh, it must be in the foyer. It's the curse, the curse, the curse of Tematoro. You outsiders are ignoring them superstitions at our peril. Mind your own business, will ya? Ah! Ouch! What's all this about a curse? Tamatara is gonna curse us all unless you start sticking your nose where it don't belong. Stop the investigation and listen to what them superstitions say. Right, um... How about obeying the law before you go obeying the superstitions? Huh? Hey, what are you doing with voyaging around your neck? He's mine! You know better than to go stealing stuff from people like that. The thing goes for my bracelet. So sorry, sorry, I promise I won't do it again. <laughs> he almost kidnapped my sweet little widget. The big jerk! I'm sorry! Uh, I guess you can't teach an old raccoon dog new tricks. As long as you have him here, I guess we should ask him about what happened. You did that! It's one thing to steal a pair of shoes, but to steal a widget. <laughs> Yipes! Mercy, mercy! I can't seem to control myself. It's that thieving blood running in my veins. Thieving blood? What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> Glad you asked. The infamous bandit Azuki Kozo was my grand puppy. Take a gander at this. What exactly am I looking at? It looks like another one of them yokai to me. It's none other than dear Azuki Kozo. The rob from the rich to give to the poor. And he'd leave one of those figures at the site scene at home. What's more, I'm his grandson because he was my grandpa. Wow, you don't say. Thieves honour. It's the honest truth. Ah, the sloshing around of Azuki being scrapping together in the dead of night. It's the magical sound. Dirty money, getting washed clean for giving out to the poor. I'm a Suki Kozo, washer of money, giver out of wealth, reborn. Sorry for pause. Forget the money, you should be washing yourself on this, of this nasty habit. Wait a second, this figure looks familiar. Yes, it looks just like that old dusty figure we found in the Forbidden Chamber. Hey! What are you doing with that there figure? Oh, this? We found it in the Forbidden Chamber. Looks like it's been there practically forever. Hmm. Could be my grandpa who broke into the Forbidden Chamber way back. Hey, that reminds me. He once told me there's treasure in that there chamber. Treasure? Where's the treasure? Oh, I want some. Don't some, I'll give ya. Uh, what do you mean? What do you know about the treasure in the Forbidden Chamber? <laughs> oh yeah, it's the greatest get-rich-quick chance in the universe. Grandpappy told me all about it. Said there's amazing treasure in there. There's something amazing in there? I didn't see anything like that, though. Your grandfather didn't by any chance steal it, did he? Seeing how there was one of his figures in there, that just might be. <laughs> That's grandpappy for ya. Bet he washed that treasure up real good before handing it out to the poor. Oh, of course, because he was so righteous. In court, you remember seeing... You mentioned seeing Tamataro sit near the scene of the crime. Sorry, I didn't come clean right away, but them superstitions got the better of me. People of Ninetales Vale sure seems like a superstition, superstitious bunch. I'm not surprised you wouldn't want to talk about seeing Tematari. 
Darn right, them superstitions scare me out of more wits, I tell ya. That's why I'm gonna do exactly what they say from now on. So you plan on staying here in Nine Tails Vale? Yep, I'm gonna keep living right here and keep with the old ways just like Grandpa Peter did. Them superstitions are like a real book to me. Oi, so you're saying you actually believe in those old wives' tales? Ain't you been listening to a word I said? You're gonna do exactly what them superstitions say? Well, I say that's baloney. Uh. Do not gaze, you want to others if you see him. Take that! It's clearly written right here. Ignoring the superstitions will cost you your soul. There is, however, one way to save it your immediate departure from the village. Ah. So, according to this, you shouldn't even be here, let alone talking with us. You said you plan on staying right here in Ninetales Vale. But if you really believed in the superstitions, you wouldn't have, would have been gone long, long gone by now. Wah! I know you've been lying to me. Time to come clean, Mr. Filch. Yipes! You were lying about believing in the superstitions, weren't you? Sorry, but I didn't have no choice. So what's the real reason why you couldn't talk about seeing Tamataro? It's all that pretty boy's fault. Mr. LaBelle, if you know what I mean. He told me not to say a word about seeing Tamataro. So if I did, he'd do to me what them superstitions said would happen. So it was Mr. LaBelle who muzzled you. Why would Mr. LaBelle want to scare you into silence? Mr. LaBelle was trying to protect that little maid girl. Yeah, it was on the account of that rumour, the one about her being possessed. That rumour again. I guess we really do have to talk to Miss Henry about the possession rumour. Ouch! Hey, watch it! Village position stolen by Phineas Filch. I'll be taking this back now. <laughs> Can't have family to me. You could have just asked instead of stealing it. Was that all we wanted to ask, Mr. Filch? Yeah, I think that was it. Let's go see Mr. Tamataro one more time. Just thinking about dealing with that yokai again makes me want to say pass. Pass? Come on then, yokai boy. April 18th. This happens next week. Oh, a week earlier. Lord Tenma, your attorneys are here to see you, your malevolence. Um... Why are you speaking like that? Oh, Metenma, you've returned. Yes, well, Jinxie came by earlier to apply a new charm to my head. It seems to be suppressing the demon within me. That's a relief. Maybe we'll actually get somewhere this time. So, what can I do for you today? You'd like to ask about that rumour that Jinxie's possessed. Ah. She allegedly left the yokai evidence at the scene while under a demon's power. At least that's what the prosecution is going to claim tomorrow. At the trial. <laughs> huh? <laughs> ha 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 ha! No match in this warning charm for me! Ah! The charm! Timotar is back! It's foolish mortals. They shall regret blaming that child for my doings. Ugh, I blew it! That question brought that yokai back! And he probably won't drop the axe until Jinxie's name is cleared either. We'd like to ask you about something your aide Lo Florent LaBelle mentioned. Did you know Jinxie is rumoured to be possessed? I know not of what you speak. You're not trying to protect Jinxie, are you? I, Tempotaro, demon lord of the yokai, protect a mere mortal! Ha 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 ha! No affections do I possess for your race of humans. Please, we already proved there was a third party disguised as a yokai at the scene. If you deny that tomorrow, we'll never be able to clear Mayor Temmin's name. But I've already told you, I know not of what you speak. I don't think we'll get anything more out of him. It's all over unless we can prove, somehow, that Jinxie didn't plant that yokai evidence. Hey, Apollo, I think I've got this one. I think I can prove that she didn't do it. Really? Sure! I should be able to use psychology to explain the whole possession thing. Knock yourself out then. Wow, Athena's really something. I can really count on her when it counts.
Mayor Temma Jinxie isn't possessed. I believe her so-called possession episodes are a form of som... somnab... somnab... somnambulism. Somnambulism? Somnambulism? You mean sleep sleepwalking? Yes, I believe she's exhibited a rare form of the disorder. It's usually brought on by repressed stress. Mr. Mayor, didn't her symptoms start as soon as she began her job in Ninetales Vale? Hmm. When the child visited last, she did speak of dreading yokai and how they rob her of sleep each night. I knew it! That lack of sleep is causing her to enter an unconscious state. And that means she can't be trying to protect you, at least not on a conscious level. So then, the Temasari that was spotted at the manor was a jinxie. Sleepwalking, eh? Hmm. That would indeed explain the matter. Look, Temataro's spirit. It's left the mayor's body. Can you tell us the truth now, Mayor Tenma? Very well. It's the, like, it's the least I could do for a superb exorcist such as you. <laughs> it's called psychology, not <laughs> exorcism, but, you know, same thing. It might, it might be the same thing. Did I get a new follower? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Okay. I was wondering why it says 69 followers, because I used to have 69, but then someone unfollowed me. And now I don't have 69 anymore, which is depressing. Mayor Timmer, you didn't leave those feathers and checks at the scene, did you? I did not. Neither I nor Jixie have anything to do with that. That was the killer's doing, no doubt. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. You suspect Florence is behind all this? But why? Did he really want Ninetales Vale that badly? Can you think of any other reason why? Hmm. Looking back, he did seem fixated on Tenmataro for a spell. Ah, could it be? Perhaps he was attempting to release Tenmataro. That's crazy. Are you saying that Yokai is real? Whatever the case, Tenmataro brings nothing but pain and misfortune. It has. It is. Oh god, it's as the superstitions warn. You must not gaze upon him, nor free him from his prison. But, how can people actually believe that? Well, at least we know who's behind this whole Tematara thing now. Yeah, and I think we need to have another nice long chat with Mr. LaBelle. Yep, dinner, dinner is ready, your benevolence! Ah, an offering to the Demon King. You may place it right there. The kitchen crew pulled their heart and soul into making it. Did they now? Souls happen to be my favourite of mine. Just hold their hearts next to mine. Ha 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 ha. Yes, your malevolence, I remember that. How long is he planning to keep up this yokai charade? Well, we've already talked to Mr. Filch in mid so why don't we go see Florian LaBelle next? Now that we know the truth, he won't be able to claim that the Tenmataro was Jinxie or the mayor anymore. But the real question is how are we going to get him to admit it was him? You're not. I wouldn't go to him if I were you. He's a criminal! Oh, he's changed his hair again. Okay, now let's practice that again, Phil Shea, from the top! Uh, Mr. Lavelle was in the foyer at the time of the crime, and when the, uh, uh, scream, uh, ah, oh, heck, what was the next part again? Ah! You have the memory capacity of a flame! It's the 13th time, are you know! There are a hundred times more and we're done! What on earth are they practicing? Oh, I ain't cut out for this. Oopsie daisy. Oh! Oh, begging your pardon, Mr. Bell, sir. It's just all this practice. Yikes! Unbelievable! What if you'd studied my outfit with those grubby paws of yours? Did Filch filch LaBelle's wallet just now? So, what do you think they're up to this time, Apollo? Hmm? Oh, it's you two! Eavesdropping, are we? You peasants are so, so tacky! But what do you want with me? Your confession to being the Tematara imposter would be nice right about now.
Mr. Filch filled me in on a conversation you two had. About how you told him not to say a word about seeing Tamataro. Filch, are you fool! Yikes! I told you nothing good would come of you running your mouth! So why did you want to keep Mr. Filch quiet like that, Mr. Lebel? <laughs> why, to protect darling little Jinxie, of course! But Jinxie was Oh shit. But Jinxie was never really possessed. She was sleepwalking. Being asleep at the time, she couldn't have been conscious and trying to protect the man. That also means she couldn't have possibly been Tematara. Interesting. But where are you going with this? Since you are so politely, I believe you have a different reason for trying to keep Mr. Filch quiet. That reason would be to deflect doubt away from the one who was really Tematara. <laughs> Now this is getting interesting! Are you insinuating that I'm Tematara? So sorry to disappoint, but I'm nothing of the sort! That's right, Mr. Lavelle even told me Tematara was Jinxie. I said Tematara was Jinxie, you fool! Wait, what? Ain't that what he said? Was a Jinx. <laughs> Honestly, you have the memory capacity of a flea! Practice it a hundred more times! Yipes! So, um, have you been called to testify tomorrow? Yes, I'm so looking forward to my courtroom debut! But you'll just have to wait until then! <laughs> oh, I'll be waiting with a special piece of evidence I've been saving just for you. Filchy, wake up, you lazy bird! Oh, uh, what? Uh, was I sleeping? Oh, well, so with that sweet clone of yours, Mr. LaBelle, uh, maybe you aren't sleeping in. Well, it's time for your lesson on what to do and say tomorrow. Oh, I'm begging you not another lesson. I ain't cut out for this thinking and remembering stuff. Ah! Well, I'm a schnozzler. Keep quiet and do exactly as I say. No, please! Anything but another lesson. There they go. Missed our chance to get the truth out of him. Yeah, but we'll get the proof we need in court tomorrow, one way or another. All that's left now is that lie Jinxie told. We'd better go clear that up before tomorrow. You think they're done questioning Jinxie? Maybe. Let's see if she's over at on Yokai Lane shopping for more charms. Mm -mm. I said Nine Tails Fox. The time for you to come. I think that's what she said. My grudge has been infested over time, and last vengeance will be mine. <laughs> she must be uh, sleep sleepwalking again. Maybe if I speak softly, I won't startle her and get a charm plastered on my forehead. Psst, Jinxie. Huh? Oh, hello, Mr. Demon Lawyer. Oh, my charm must have fallen off again. Phew, guess I can avoid a charm snap by toning down my claws of steel. Are they done questioning you, Jinxie? Uh-huh. And on the way back, I stopped here to buy a new charm that was just released. Yeah, which one? Oh, um, the one with the Nine Tails Fox and Tenmataro. It shows them dancing together. Really? Two bit rivals dancing together? Uh-huh. It's a charm for rebu rebuilding burnt bridges. Oh, right. For the municipal murder issue. No, uh, it's for the demon lawyer and somebody at prosecutor. It'll stop you two from fighting like you did in court this morning. We weren't fighting, it was just a spirit of debate. It's what we lawyers- Ah! No fighting! Ugh. Charm sapped again. Oh, if you're done playing around, let's find out what she was lying about. Jinxie, it seems like you're starting to remember things. You already said the feathers and tracks weren't there when you discovered the crime. Have you remembered anything else that seems important? Eek! Like what? Tell us what you saw that day. Maybe you'll remember something else this time. Eek! When I opened the door, Papa and Alderman and Kyrie were collapsed in the alt fox chamber. That's when Papa told me to call an ambulance in the police. That's all he said before he passed out in the chair. I knew it. She's holding something back. Got 
<laughs> that was easy. <laughs> you were very nervous when you said that's all he said, weren't you? I know because I saw your fingers move as if you were going to slap someone with a charm. Huh? Listen to me, Jinxie. This is very important. Did Mayor Temma say anything else to you? It, it was. It was nothing. He was just talking in his sleep. Talking in his sleep? So you admit that he did say something else? Eek! How could you tell? Only, only a demon like you could have such powers. You do look a bit demonic, <laughs> um, follow when you do all that crazy stuff. That deceiving. Oh, God. Like I said, he was just talking in his sleep. I mean, why else would Papa say something like that? Could you be a little more specific? Before he fainted, he said, Forgive me, Jinxie, I killed Alderman Kyubi. He said what? Did Matt actually confess to the crime? But he didn't mean it. He couldn't possibly have known what he was saying. He was probably possessed, so maybe he was in the middle of a nightmare. A nightmare? No, this is a nightmare. This is one statement I wish I'd never heard. What in the world are we going to do to it now? Just pretend you never heard it. <laughs> return to the basics? Yeah, we return to the basics. Always believe in your client. That is a lawyer's greatest and most trusted weapon. Trusted weapon. Right. Just believe in my client. Even if all I can see is ahead is darkness and despair. Pinksy, does Prosecutor Blackwell know about your father's confession? I didn't mention it when he was questioning me. I mean, there's no way Papa's the killer. Why would the mayor confess like that? Could he really have been dreaming or simply delirious? Who knows, but I'm sure I feel like I'm living a nightmare now. Apollo, what are we going to do about tomorrow's trial? The crime scene was locked tight until Jinxie arrived. And our client even confessed. Not only Jack, Jinxie has been accused of planting that yokai evidence. Both the mayor and Jinxie are going to prison if we don't do something. I know, I know. Well, let's see here. Our lack of a third party in the locked room is a major problem. Jinxie has testified that when she first opened the door, Alderman Kayubi and Mayor Temma were the only people she saw in the fox chamber. The real killer must have been hiding in Nero's car. Considering the room was locked tight, that's the only logical explanation. A mystery person must have fled. The, the fox chamber when it was open. That's when Jinxie saw what she thought was Tematara. But, but, Papa and Alderman were the only people there. I didn't see anyone else. What's going on here? The girl's extremely pale, but he's far from transparent. So just how did he hide himself at the scene of the crime? Whatever it takes in court tomorrow, Apollo. We have to take down that dirty one and Tematara from Lapel. Right, we'll get him with a legal exorcism justice style. To be continued! Thank you everyone so much for joining. I think that's wrapped up nicely and I'll see you in the next one. When we're going to finish the trial for the court for this case and then hopefully get Mr. Hairspray arrested and found guilty. And I can do his breakdown. <laughs> Okay, okay. See you guys in the next one. This has been Psycho Eleven signing out. Bye bye.